Uh, star citizen, star citizen, thing, thing, thing. Uh, I wanted to start off. First of all, uh, since you didn't have a video, Ace, I want you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your gaming community. Uh, I really want to know more about it. I think uh, e even though you haven't had an opportunity to stream as much as you like to lately, uh, the work that you put into running your community deserves some discussion. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and the gaming community that you run, Ace. Heck yeah, man. I appreciate that. Hey, everybody. I'm Ace Tycho. Uh, yeah, my game community is a, a variety community, and we love, love, um, well, we love a good quality, um, non-toxic community. That doesn't mean that we don't have our disagreements and we all get all fired up at times, but we... What the biggest objective is that we have wonderful times together and you might even make a friend there right and so a wide variety of games a lot of the free ones that are super fun like planet side 2 warframe uh and a bunch of others uh, where you love love the new leagues and path of exile when they drop and we just love hanging out every day uh, throughout the day usually in the evenings around eastern time uh, to later in the night, throughout the night, but sometimes in the mornings as well. And um, yeah, we're a warm, welcoming community that loves meeting new people of all ages um, and you know, all different gaming genres, even a few people that don't like playing games. They just love hanging out, having great conversations and making friends. And of course, Star Citizen is a game that a lot of our community members love that I'm continuously recruiting, getting new people in, when their computers can run it and uh, it's just <laughs> super super fun so yeah we're a warm welcoming community that really really loves just meeting new new folks so yeah yeah it's, a it's always part. a rough conversation when you recruit someone who actually turns out to only own an <laughs> xbox there you go, there you go. <laughs> like, yeah. oh <laughs> that's why that's why i put a, i put a bunch of like preamble on my recruitment statement and be like make sure you meet all these specifications otherwise just watch the show also are, are they both a non-stick <laughs> and a non-toxic group uh rollo kip wanted to know if it was non-stick because that's what he thought he heard yes yes okay they're non-stick so so both win <laughs> All right, so, uh, and uh, Asapita, you you gave me a video to show off. So I let's, did. Let's go ahead and watch that video I did. Real quick. I did give you a video. I wanna, let's watch so it awesome. together, guys. Um, Turn it up, because it's funny. Well, okay. not you. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Let's go. I'll, I'll turn it. I'll turn it up too, okay? They can turn it up. You can turn it up. Let's let's see <laughs> what asapita has got to show for us. But I gotta I gotta like alt tab to the other streaming service that I'm using as a webcam real quick so I can <laughs> switch. This we love technology. Layout. Technology. Technology is amazing. Everything's great. Don't be afraid. Here we go. Oh, Sigelian's so hosting. Thank you for the host. All right, here we go. One, two. It's like me in Red Dead Redemption. Every time I play it, horses hit trees all the time. There you go. So, so Asapita, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, to, oh, wanna, that, that video know. makes me crack me up every time I see it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, your show, and uh, and your gaming community. Because I, I know, like most of us, you have your own community of people that uh, are part of your stream and that uh, participate with you. So I'd like to know more about them. Uh, um, so I am Osapita. Um, as Buster calls me, Osapita, which is fine. Uh, I, I've i heard every name in the book out there of even Oxapita, which I find quite amusing because there is no X even a silent X in my name. So 
just don't call me late for dinner. But as far as my community is concerned, uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, we had an idea. Um, you know, the Echelon News 7 was a concept that was done back in... Um, to, uh, the, the concept came up in 2015. Uh, we launched it 2016 and officially launched it in 2017. So I've been around for a while. Um, but we are a role-playing news organization out in the verse. Uh, we don't do uh, any kind of events really outside of Star Citizen uh, events. Uh, but we hooked up with Damar Rally, and that's what we've been doing. That's our main stick, is uh, doing Damar Rally. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing some more stuff with uh, Mayhem this year. Uh, not working the weekends anymore. <laughs> Who's working anymore? Um, <laughs> so... Um, so I'll probably get involved with that a little bit more, doing some broadcasting with that. Really? Now that and, was uh, a mood. <laughs> what? Now that one was a mood. <laughs> it was working anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was working. <laughs> <Oxy clear. laughs> um, but yeah, so I am a variety streamer, though. So, uh, But my love is Star Citizen. It will always be Star Citizen. And... I will always come back to Star Citizen, and once we actually have a viable Star Citizen game, then I'll probably be playing it all the time. So, uh, but right now I am a variety streamer, and playing games like Days Gone and running into trees <laughs> that it's good moments, nothing right? else is around. <laughs> you know? So, oh, um, the, the we we did finally come up with a a motto for my my stream and my community and that is whatever kills us faster own it because there's two <laughs> things there's two things about my stream i play on the hardest difficulty you could possibly imagine so instead of me actually saying that all the time my community is now starting to say whatever kills her faster is the mode that we play on <laughs> right and the other thing is, is you know, I see a lot of streamers playing the hardest difficulties and getting frustrated and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, I don't want to see them throw a TV monitor through their screen because they're playing on the hardest difficulty. Just own the fact that you died. So that's our new motto. We just came up with it this week. So there you have it. It's, it's Whatever kills us faster, own it. <laughs> It's about sucking as much joy out of the game as you can. You get a lot more hours if you keep on dying, right? right? Exactly. I, like they cut, I had somebody in my stream today come in and he says, I just come in to see you die. That I know. It's I was like, okay. Solid. <laughs> solid. All of, naps, all of yeah. the naps. I don't even have to play on the hardest difficulty to die probably about as much as you do, Aussie. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, let's go ahead. I'm Gander Olap. And uh, let's watch let's watch my video of the week. Let me pull it up. Um, okay, so for context, my viewers donated enough money uh, week before last for me to actually buy some used bicycles for my kids, so that I could get them ready for my youngest son's birthday. Me and him share a birthday, which happened this last uh, this last Sunday, and so. I was, I'm in a position where I couldn't actually afford to buy a gift for my children, so the only reason I was able to get the bike was uh, the people donating on the stream. So it was a really big deal, and I wanted to say thank you to everyone who contributed there because it really, really meant a lot to them. Um, but I did a special little stream of me getting those bicycles ready to make my children think they were new. And, uh, and I'll do it like a wheelchair, but with okay. tiny wheels. Um, I, I was challenged by my viewers uh, to use their old bike, well, tricycle. So you'll see here, just a moment. <clears throat> okay, here you are. Uh, this is me. <laughs> I'm a big boy. Uh, and one of my viewers, I, I took the handlebars off of this little blue. It's like a solid steel tricycle that my children, okay, I keep I on. Okay, be back. Um, if not, go ahead and have oh, a refresh. You're back. We can. On, the, on there. What's Let's wrong? Let's see. <coughs> so I'm going um, to go ahead and play it now. 
We're gonna give it a minute. Cool. Wait, I I see it. Was just I'll do like a wheelchair issue 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 with tiny wheels. Twitch. I'm not quite sure. Honestly. So, I. Yeah, I can turn this way too. It was suggested okay. that I should attempt I to ride the tricycle for myself. Tricycle for adults. <laughs> okay. Um, the only way I could get it to move was to move the back wheels. <laughs> oh God! Sorry. Myself. Let's go ahead and do something. And there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and restart this. Aussie, we can we can there hear you, you by the way. How you doing today, Cat? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's hard. Who can hear who? Come on. Uh, oh, it's... Hello? I, c I could hear you. Uh, there you go. Oh. Uh, what? What? It's, it sounded like you were saying you were restarting Okay, that's it. enough. No. Oh, my ass. Uh-uh. There you go. All right, okay. am, are you here? Can <laughs> okay, you hear me? So, yeah, yeah we hear you. Oh, okay. That's what saying. All right. Good. We're just watching his video. It's awesome. This is there the uh, <laughs> you know, new By the way, happy they birthday. They just dropped this video about three yes. hours ago. <laughs> Dude, oh, I I was, was so cool. Okay, I was going crazy there, Aussie, because I had your clip up before it auto started playing your last show, and I started hearing you talking oh, at the beginning of the show. Like, no, I was, and I was, I was like, the... "What is going on? Why is Aussie talking <laughs> like she doesn't have her microphone set up?" She's like, "Just one second, <laughs> let me fix this." And I'm like, what, what, "What do you mean? Everything's fine." Everything's fine, Aussie. What are you talking about? I'm like, why is she still talking? I'm like, That's awesome. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm okay. sitting here going, wait okay. a second. Now that I'm I... done going completely crazy. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Look what Houston Gillian said. <laughs> <laughs> like they all heard it too. Like, right? like it was just like, wait, she's right there. She's right there, right? Like, is everything <laughs> okay with Aussie? Said, yes. He's like, Gandora, why are you being so rude and talking over her? She needs help. <laughs> oh. oh my God, we guys, we always know what we're doing. <laughs> we're we're a hundred percent professional crew. Welcome to the night crew. Pro strammer. Um, Pro strammer. Okay, awesome. so. I um he's I sitting, actually start. I don't know. I was just sitting here eating a strawberry, and he's just like, "What's going on?" I was like, "You can hear me eat the strawberry." I'm like, "What are you doing, Aussie? I see you. I hear you. What's wrong?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pro streamer. So oh. so I I actually started oh God, streaming dude. um after I had started my gaming group. And the reason was I started I started a gaming group around a game called Orbis VR. It was the first VR MMO. And it grew to be one of the biggest groups in the game. And we got to the point where we had so many people that only a, only a couple people could participate in the raids because they only had like five man groups. So in order to include more people, uh, I needed to actually go through and and start streaming so that they could participate in the events. Sadly, that game started to die and dwindle out. And what ended up happening was I moved over to Elite Dangerous, which had been what got me into VR in the first place on my stream. And then one of my viewers convinced me during a free flight to try Star Citizen out. <laughs> and, um, you know, everything that has followed can be blamed on that individual. Because I am obsessed with Star Citizen. <laughs> but awesome. I am still a variety gamer and a variety streamer, largely because I want to guarantee that every Tuesday I play Star Citizen. And if I play it too much with my personality, I will burn out really hard and turn into a salt streamer. And I do not want to be a salt streamer. I want to get passion and joy out of the games I play. That's why I play. That's why I stream. I stream to give you guys chill entertainment, and I run my group to have a chill, relaxed place to be. So uh, for me, the, the Super Friends is the, uh, the gaming group that I run. We do offline and online content, and usually when I'm flying in the verse, I'm either with one of you guys from the night crew or a full crew of members from the Super Friends that I have accumulated and convinced to buy the game. Uh, 
The nice thing is, as VR players, they were really well suited to jump into Star Citizen because they already had OP hardware. So that's where that's where I found the synergy was was that like where if I had run a different kind of gaming group before, I would have had a lot harder time converting people into playing it. Now, not everyone necessarily likes it because um, I am I am broken, much like you guys, because you like Star Citizen, right? Ace, you like Star Citizen. Aussie, Dude, every day you I like Star Citizen. Content. Every day. So we yeah. like to pray. We like to play things that aren't ready. Pray. And pray, pray to the Star Citizen. We like to pray too. things that are not yeah. ready. Right. Yeah. So the, the the reality is that people who really really get the kind of joy we get right now out of the game are the type of people who are comfortable with encountering mm. new circumstances that may or may not be intended. And personally, like, like night. <laughs> pers personally, I really enjoy kind of pushing the limits. I one of the things I really love totally. about Star Citizen is that I am able to play it in ways that might get me banned from a regular MMO because I'm right testing, on. right? Right on, right on. Like, because yeah. to me, supporting a game early on, as long as I'm not doing it maliciously and I'm reporting it, if I find a way to lure a boss out of the boss room and do something silly, that's cool when I'm testing the game. But people get really sensitive if you do that, like in a game like WoW or something like that, where you're like, yeah, I found a way to disable the boss's main move, and now we can kill the boss, and they're like, cool, you're banned. Everyone's like, oh, oh. Right. 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 <laughs> like, and so I think that that's something for me, like, to keep in mind with one of the reasons I personally really enjoy this is participating early right now in this process gives us this ability to go through and do things almost like we're part of the development team. And there's something really cool about that to me as a developer and someone who's been in charge of QA teams before. Like, it really jives with me to have that direct interface. And so I get a lot of joy out of actually encountering the, the weird circumstances, which I think is a great way to open us up to bug of the week. So Ace, you, you've played a little bit, so you've definitely encountered a bug. Give me your bug. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, again, I woke up from a really terrible dream. Um, it was involving in, in, in Ursa Rover, and I, 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 well, I, sometimes, guys, when you flip your Ursa Rovers out in the wilderness of Microtech, you don't always make it back. But it was just a bad dream, because I, I, I woke up in my head. It's and, true. Um, <laughs> All those, went, went, went those to nightmares. An, <gasps> when the character an, wakes up. <laughs> yes. So, I, I went to the elevator. And I, apparently I had another bad dream because the elevator ate me again and I fell <laughs> straight through. It was pretty amazing. And right out mm. into space because I mm. was in orbit of um, micro. Uh, oh, so yeah. you fell all the way yeah. out of the uh, space yeah. station in, just into in, into space? I'm just glad I and sleep with die? my flight suit on and my helmet on. I, I sleep that, like that everyone, all the time. Everyone yeah. should always. Yes. Like, we're going to be always. such weirdos when this actually goes always. live. <laughs> we'll be, like, right? be like, bro, where's your helmet? Where's yeah. your helmet? You're where's like, your chill, helmet, man. <laughs> I'm RPing. I, I'm like, but you I could die. <laughs> the floor can eat I'm you. I'm just saying, yeah. I take off my boots. Mm. <laughs> I take off your boots. Truth. I don't know. The truth. Truth. What? But you just keep your what? helmet on. <laughs> You're like whatever. Yeah. Take off my boots. Is that possible? Okay. Can you well, take off I the pretend flight? I take on? off my boots. I'm just like this I would cool. love this. this okay. I mean, like it would kind of. I could see it. Like it'd make you last a little longer. Your feet would be cold. Um. All right, uh -huh. Aussie. Aussie, you ready? You ready? What's your yeah. What's your bug of the week? Yeah. Give me, give me the so bug of the week. So I've been been working on all these videos that I've been doing, right? And these little, little 30 second video clips, but this, this yeah. other video I was working on, I went into uh, the game and 3.9 hadn't been there because I've been, I've been having a lot of problems this month so I haven't had a whole lot of attention into Star Citizen this month. But true enough, I had a bug within the first 15 minutes of me logging into the game. What was it? And I think that I was playing Dead Space. 
because that's what the bug reminded me of. Like, I think Dead Space trickled over into Star Citizen because I get into the Mako and I sit in the back chair and my arms went 360 degrees up and over my head. Like a rubber band. <laughs> when you were on... What vehicle were you in? In the Mako. So you were in the Mako. I was sitting in, yeah, I was sitting in the back seat. So I was actually trying to get the video clip done of me sitting oh, in the chair. Oh, but you went into the third person and your arms just went up in the air like this? <laughs> Not even up in the air. Oh, was it they, the T-pose? Like, like wrapped, were you asserting they the dominance? They actually went all the way around at a 360 oh, degree like angle. To behind, oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, Oli, tell me if I got it right. Okay, I've seen this before. Like this? It's kind of like that? And, and, yeah. and, no, and then and a little, little out, like like a duck, like a duck with uh, broken wings. Okay, but you so, know? It's, so it's more so, down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can't do that. I'm old. Like, oh, okay. and, then, and, then, and then just twist them 360 degrees around. No, I, I think I've seen people in that position, but they'll be like floating above the ship. Right. Did you, did you know one of the best parts of that? If you go to <laughs> no. actually shoot the person while they're floating t from your visual point outside of the ship, it can kill them. So that's... Uh, uh, if you wanted to break into the hammerhead, one of the best ways to do it to get into one of those turrets is to actually... Um, you can shoot... Or, or if you want to disable it, you can go to the, the NPC hammerhead... And if any of their uh, turret operators are floating outside, you can kill them. Mm -hmm. And then they'll stop shooting. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, for me, my bug of the week was I went to prison. I did a bad. It was a valid prison. Okay. And then I was like, okay, whatever. We're done for the night. I think I tried to escape prison for like couple hours and I got really close and I said that's enough I need to go work on my cabin uh, and then when I came back obviously my time had been served so I was like cool let me out of prison then I uh, you know took the elevator to leave prison and then I woke up in prison uh, <laughs> and uh, and then they were like you're trespassing you're oh, trespassing. God, so you went back to prison. <laughs> right? And they were like, oh, you've been given a crime set. So I started to try and escape. And then they were like, oh, you, uh, I died. And they were like, you've gone to prison. You did a bad. Right? And then I, yeah. So the only way, there were only two options left to me. Every time I did my time, I just would wake, back, wake up back in prison because it had decided that was my spawn point. Or I could escape. And I'm horrible at escaping. I'm so bad. <laughs> so bad. I have gotten so close mm -hmm. so many times. There was like twice I've gotten out and then fallen down that last little stair jump. Just to be like, I can I can breathe. <gasps> the air. And oh, right back. And be like, you tried to escape prison. You're a bad boy. Here's another four hours. Show, dude. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord, dude. <sighs> okay. Those prison corps just want to make money, man. They don't ever really let you go. So no, no. I mean, it don't. was it was way too real, way too real. Oh, so you so, might need to report on that. Just saying. so let's see here. Uh, maybe. Uh huh. Uh, maybe. <laughs> let's go ahead and take this question right now. So Gillian says, "What what is a valid prison?" <laughs> Does anyone Jeez. want to take this? Also said something else up above, and I'm not quite sure what the question is. Is uh, <laughs> do they allow transit? between cockpit and cargo areas within the 3.9 Reli uh, Reliant. I don't know what that means, actually. Oh, okay, so that's that's actually a good question. You have the Reliant, right? So okay. while it is in quantum, is it positioned such that you can actually get out of your pilot seat and go in the back? Or oh, is transition. it positioned? is it transitioned such that you are forced to just be in the cabin? I don't know. I was not flying it, but I will find out and I will tell you. 
Because I'm <laughs> pretty sure in flight mode, it is you're restricted to your pilot seat, which I, I could see being a real problem yeah, for long point. journeys, especially on the science yeah. version of the ship and a couple of the ones where you have like yeah. downtime activities, yeah. which would be really nice to do. Uh, it was yeah. actually one of my biggest complaints about the Mako, which is the reason yeah. it's not part of my fleet. Um and also, but my biggest issue with the Mako personally is the weapon convergence. Even the Tana. Like, the Tana is meant to be, like, uh, what yeah. I probably would actually be interested in, which is killing things. Uh, now, they did boost it recently, like, so it has a buff on its health and shield capability. But it is still, it's a bigger target than a lot of equivalent small ships, cross-section-wise. And it has, it has pretty poor weapon convergence for combat because of the distance that it keeps the weapons on. So the Tana was actually the first ship that I found that I really, really needed to actually tweak my convergence numbers to be able to hit. But that meant that I was at a bit of a disadvantage when I went back. What, why, why, is your, why is it showing your face now? Ace. I have no idea. I Are love you, Star Citizen. You're it's clearly perfect. playing the game. Okay. That's Ace now. Uh, we get to watch That's him hilarious. make his new character. <laughs> All right. So, Thank you, Star Citizen. Love you. Okay. So let's let's say a valid prison. I Honestly, so you're going to have to rephrase that question because it's a very confusing question. Uh, <laughs> Fenway, Fenway says, what an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> this is truth. I, I don't. I, okay. I don't disagree. With you. So I wanted to take a moment for us. To, like, <laughs> Star Citizen three nine is out, guys, and I think really importantly, uh, let's talk about what we suggest for the uh -huh. new player experience here. Um, it's different. It's a lot different, and I want to see what we think we should be doing in order to. Like, let's let's just let's take the perspective that we're a totally new player jumping into the game. What what does the new player experience look like? Is it different than it was before? Mm. <laughs> uh, let's start with. Austin. Yeah, I, I had I when when I became a new player and, you know, I didn't get into the game until the very end of, I think. Two like a very like the very start of two, I think, I, I think, and uh, I, I, I had the, uh, you know, the, the, the training module, the range cadre, teaching me how to do everything. Now, whether you loved or hated the tutorial, I actually learned quite a bit from the tutorial. I was like, even if you hated it. And even if it was broken, it gave you very good basic summaries of how to start the game, especially because I was playing on uh, with an Xbox controller. So I, did, I wasn't even playing on keyboard and mouse. So that was, to me, very, very important to know how, you know, to even get out of the hangar. Now, if you ever watched my videos on the bloopers of my first hangar flight, you'll laugh your ass off for two minutes because it's hilarious uh even the range cadre yelled at me i was like this is a 13 billion dollar <laughs> plane how can you ruin it you know and he was yelling at me so whether you loved or hated the tutorial there was a reason for it and it was an improvement today i feel sorry for anybody starting in star citizen you know as a new player because you have to get help from other people or you have to watch streamers stream and ask questions or watch youtube videos yeah. even to have the ability to you know launch out of a hangar somewhere yeah so. honestly i came into the game <clears throat> at, after 3.0 so there was no tutorial oh man i uh oh, dude that's I, my point honestly <laughs> i almost rage quit when i when it took me longer than i felt i should have to take yeah. to just get out of my hab because yeah, not yeah. even knowing that I had to hold down F, because my natural instinct with every other game has been to do E, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so that alone 
annoyed me enough initially that I was like, all right, whatever. I can't even get out of my hab, right? Luckily, I had the person who was trying to convince me to the game to play the game there to mentor me. But without a mentor, this game is pretty difficult. But this this applied at 3.8. It applied at 3.7. That is a, a more fundamental problem. The real question is, what's the difference if you if you were 3.8 moving into 3.9 now? still relatively fresh you're still like you know you're trying to get your starting cash or anything like that if if you're saying like what are the first couple things that you should do now versus before that's that's my big question and i'll, I'll let ace wh what was the first things that you did when you jumped into the new patch and what and do you think you made good choices so I could have a lot to say about the new player experience because I help people learn and jump in and have private just help time quite often. And I pray that new players don't pick Lorville as their first place. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so do you mind reiterating what you're wondering about so, so I could focus So the, more? the main thing is... We're going into 3.9. People are going to be installing that and trying that out over the next week. Okay. Right? Okay. What are things that are different from their experience on maybe 3.7 or 3.8 that they should watch out for? Jeez. There's a lot. There's a lot. But, like, I, I, just, just yeah. highlight, highlight on, on something. Like, what's the most important thing? <laughs> Shoot. I, um... Yeah, you, you got me in the mindset of Sig. You need to do this for the new player experience so badly, like what Osi <laughs> was saying about new player experience stuff like that, and like what you had to go through getting out of your hab. Uh, don't get me started. Calm yourself, Ace. Calm yourself. All right. Um, well, in regards to three point nine, the um, <laughs> it, I'm I'm definitely slow today because I don't I don't know exactly how to answer it because I went in like 12 different directions um, about the new experience. So I, I guess overall, um, and please tell me if I'm going in the wrong direction. Um, like sure. when you, when like, so if you're a new player and some of the, some of my, <coughs> you know what? No, nah, man. I'm going in multiple directions because I don't think I know how to answer this because I don't think I understood it. You, you want me to, you want me to it. start us out? Go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, okay. Lead the way. All right, all right. I, I like Fenwin's comment about how uh, the new player experience is like the job market right now. <laughs> 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 okay. Hmm. I, I actually I have a pretty <clears throat> positive overall image. Okay. I tested. 3.9 PTU a lot. There were definitely a lot of bugs. I'm worried personally about some of the ones I found, particularly in the criminal loop. I, The big thing to keep in mind that's hugely different for a lot of you guys out there is the consequences for crime are significant. And you need to be prepared to, if you're going to be going down that path, you're going to be tantalized by these bigger rewards for these these missions, but you're also going to be encountering some significant um, significant consequences for failure. And I do think that if you're a new player and you decided to go down the criminal path, it's probably going to be too hard for you. Like, like the criminal path now is like the advanced mode for people who have more experience in the game, which makes sense, right? You don't run around being a five-star criminal successfully without being a skilled pilot and having picked up pretty good equipment and being ready to, to take on everyone who wants to come and kill you, right? But before... You know, if you wanted to run outside and fight anyone, you could, and uh, and that'd be fine. But now you're going to need to coordinate a little bit better. We've done some of these missions; they can be really, really tough. 
you're experiencing the emergent gameplay so far has all been around the prison system itself. Prowlers are prowling. Uh, so if you're trying to escape prison, you're just racking more and more time. My recommendation is if you have a small crime stat, just learn how to hand mine in the mines and do that because one or two rounds in the mines will get you out very quickly if you have a two hour or less sentence. Once you're up to the 10 hour plus mark, you need to coordinate with friends to get out of there. And, and my big concern is really the temptation is going to be for people to just stop playing at that point. I'm concerned about that. I feel like criminals deserve to enjoy the game just as much as us. I feel like it's overbalanced in favor of, yeah. you know, yeah. even as someone who r runs a Care Bear squad, right? <laughs> like, I feel like this lack of balance in the other direction is going to ruin a lot of the core game, core like active members experience right now. So I'm hoping that we'll see some balancing on it because 24 hour sentences with it taking about 15 to 20 minutes to knock an hour off of that time with mining as your best option. That's it's too much time in prison. Uh, you know, I, I like I like it in a lot of ways, but I think it needs balance, like a lot of the gameplay loops. That's my assessment. I feel like a lot of people who are like, well, just don't be a criminal, right? But I, I want to make sure that we're like being open about the way the game should be working for these folks, right? Like I feel personally like we should be all able to enjoy the experience even if we disagree with the way someone else chooses to play the game 100% dude so with 100%. with me leading in Asi, do do you have any <laughs> do you have anything to add to that particular side of the conversation um you know i i, I mean I am, even though I play, like, you know, you were talking about the, the, the Mako and how, you, you know, you can't fire this or that. Like, I just go out and film. Like, that's what the Mako's for, is for filming, not for shooting. Um, so, for shooting I don't film. do a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do a whole lot. I'm just saying, I don't usually run into a whole lot of hostels, so. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> don't shoot them, burn them. But anyway, uh, as far as uh, as far as as far as the the crime thing goes, it's like I'm not the one to do all the crime side. I mean, I get in my eclipse and I take care of bounties from afar. That's pretty much what I do. Is I just take care of bounties as they come, and if I can get a clean sniper shot off of them with the eclipse, then I will. And if I can't, then I don't. You know, I cut and run or whatever. You know, but. Uh, you know that's that's my gameplay, and I had thought about maybe trying the criminal sign, but if they don't balance it right, then it's just gonna cause disruption, like you were saying a lot. It's, it's it just causes too much disruption, and and because I stream, if I get into trouble and then I have this habitual loop. And then I get frustrated with Star Citizen, and I don't do that on my stream. I try very hard not to get, you know, kind of, I think you made the comment about being a salt, you know, a salty streamer. Yeah. It's like, I'm kind of a salt and pepper streamer. There right? you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. Never hurt anybody, but I, I definitely don't want to you know, become that person where I'm just so frustrated with the game. And I have been frustrated with the game before. So um, so if I get into this, this crime loop or something like that and can't get out of it, then I just ruin my ability to stream that game for a while. So, oh, I have Himalayan salt, by the way. That's actually what I actually use. I can't afford <laughs> the lava salt. So I do have Himalayan salt. Sigalian. Lava salt? My favorite. Yeah, it's black salt. Okay. It's uh it's it's 
also part of Hawaiian culture, and it's actually lava and salt combined. I'm not sure how they process it, but it's actually even better than Himalayan pink salt. It's way better for you. Okay. <laughs> Sounds weird, but it's better for you. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, I don't I don't want to get into that loop. Uh, I want to try the criminal system, and see, that's my problem, is I really want to try the criminal system, but I also don't want to make my stream suffer, or my ga or my enjoyment of the game, because I'm stuck in some type of endless pit of mining, and I hate mining, so, <laughs> you know, I don't know, I... I mean, you're right on the money about new players coming in and getting into that loop, and it could just just ruin their experiences altogether. Yeah, so. I'm, that's that's where I'm concerned, right? Like, imagine yourself. You start out as a uh, like you come in in Aurora, and mm -hmm. and you're like, cool. Uh, I see a mission here. I'm gonna take it, and it takes you out to a location where you're shooting at a green guy. All of a sudden. Mm -hmm. you, Right, you managed to kill this guy with your uh, Aurora, which is badass. Good job. Um, mm -hmm. And then you uh, you have a uh, Nanny Asi comes out with an eclipse <laughs> to take your bounty, which is valid, right? Right. Or right. Pandora, yeah. right? Because I normally do bandy bounty hunting as well. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you're in prison and you got a three star because you murdered someone. So right. that is six hours. Yeah. Right. It's a lot of time. It's right. A lot of time. And so then now you go out and you, and if you if you're being a good sport about it, you're gonna go and try and mine and stuff. But maybe mm. you'll try and escape, right? And mm -hmm. even me as a super experienced player of the game, I've spent I've now spent six to nine hours just learning how to escape and i've only i've only breathed uh toxic air at the surface twice so far that said i am not the best at those type of you know run jump and go through all those type scenarios it's but it is a it is a very difficult challenge to escape and so if you mm. do attempt to do that you're adding time every time i've been as high as 24 hours Right. Mm. And so I, I normally avoid criminal activity, but I really wanted to take the perspective of a criminal in this game and make sure that I understood what those individuals were going to be experiencing since that was sure. one of the core pieces of the content. Now, sure. I think they did an amazing job of it and just some tweaking on some of those times. Make it so that your mind materials give you more merits so it takes more of your time off. Uh, decrease the, the maximum sentence because 24 hours real time is ridiculous. Right? It's a long time. Well, you're, you're basically saying you're not playing today. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. That's it. Like, yeah. you're... So I don't think that's acceptable. I don't think it's acceptable to tell a player of the game that they're not going to play the game anymore today because they did a play loop in the game that is valid. Yeah, 100%, right? man. 100%. Like, and, so, and there's only so much content in the prison system. I, I'm sure that someone's going to be like the prison pimp lord, like the guy who just like sits there, stays in prison, and sta and shivs everyone all the time and that's going to be like their main gameplay loop is to just force them to try and escape instead of mining but for most people <laughs> for most people that's not the main content of the game um and so that is that is that's my big area of concern i didn't feel like it was ready to get pushed through I'm okay with the PTU even coming earlier, but I just personally didn't feel like it was balanced enough to not create some heartache for folks who were in that experience. And, and well, I'll, yeah, go ahead. I, I think, I think with a lot of things with why they push certain things is that, you know, they, they try to get their, their most complex type of coding through and I think it's valid for them to put it through because they put in, you know, the, the law system. I think it's it's okay they put it in, but 
now you gotta you gotta worry about the that loop and that twenty four hour criminal pimp lord who's gonna be shiving everybody, you know. <laughs> but they you you gotta you gotta watch that kind of thing. But I think putting it in the game now only betters it when it actually goes live, you know, as far as, you know, the game as an entirety, it's a big complicated system and I'm okay with them putting it in now. It just, they, everybody has to be willing to work with it and fix it. They're called um, shot if it callers, doesn't work. We got it wrong. <laughs> that too. Shot callers. It's uh, not yeah. pimp Lord sh sh shiv master. <laughs> We've got it all wrong. It's shot callers. <laughs> Okay, that Shock that Carver. that that's probably more likely to be. Yeah. Used. Uh, yeah. No, I totally. There's only one. I, I agree. There's yeah. only one time I've ever been in a prison system in a game ever, and I don't mean made up role playing things, right? And that was Ultima Online, and that's the only time I've ever been in prison. And they used it as um, a banning tool for players who actually were jerks in the game. You know, that's. That is what they used it for. So I don't know of any other game that's ever used, a, you know, a massive prison system for any kind of disciplinary action. So this is, to me, this is really exciting to see this because I haven't seen it since Ultima Online. Yeah. And uh, but that was structured just a little bit differently. Yeah. You know, as, you know I but, think. You know. I think that like. I don't know. Like anything they bring out, it comes out totally unbalanced, either in favor or against that behavior, right? So mm -hmm. the way it's balanced right now, I feel like people are going to do a crime and then they're very quickly be like, all right, either I'm not playing or I'm going to be real careful about my crime stuff, right? Right. And, uh, and you'll have some people who are like really – just getting better at popping people and making sure that they don't get popped back and then being like, all right, cool. Let's go to our alt while we wait for that to cool off or they'll master the escape loop and they'll, they'll get their crime stat down. Right. But that's just definitely not necessarily for everyone. Uh, and, and that's okay. Now this does open up for more of your regular type of experience in the verse i think it's going to make things less contentious but you guys gotta remember like one of the most amazing things about this game is the pvp that that is ultimately mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. converted me to this game and i was not a pvp player but i was just too dumb to realize i was i was killing players i just thought the ai was really good because i couldn't tell the difference between a player and a non-player when i first started it's pretty cool, actually. Right. And that was like that was a big deal to me when I first came in. I was just like, wow, everyone says the AI sucks in Star Citizen, but I've been having some real challenging times going after these red names. Right. I didn't know they were players. I was just like, oh, it's like until I started reading the salt channel. That's what I call global chat. Um that's that's where I finally read it. We were like, why that? Why the hell are you killing us, Gandora? And I was like, oh, you're a person. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I didn't know I was killing people. <laughs> and so, but yeah. Well, uh, you'd feel really silly if if you thought they were actual NPCs nowadays, because now all they do is stand on tables. So you no, know, no, 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 no. Aussie, <laughs> they started moving around and using the mats and stuff. I Oh, well, I know. I did see that when I logged in. I only had 15 minutes. Okay. It but I be... ran through Bambit, you know, uh, the new Babbage thing. I did see that they were working. This, those NPCs, you know, so. they're not standing on tables anymore, guys. I had one so pop the, out so of the, the ground so the, and start jogging. So the strike is over, yeah? Yeah, yeah. The strike? Because no, that's like, what I, I've been saying. They've all been on strike. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just remember when I first installed the PTU, I ran up and stood on top of one of the couches and I was like, guys, aren't we doing this? Come on. Like all <laughs> these NPCs running around using yoga mats and stuff. And I'm like, oh, but at least they still had the, uh, it was like the vendor in new Babbage who aggressively uh, T poses. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they've still got that at least. Yeah. Somebody but, has yeah. to. They've done a really, right. really good job with some of the improvements to the actor system. They've pushed out 
a lot. I still have a lot to explore on the moons. I got mm. pretty distracted with checking all of the crime stuff, honestly. The, the Prowler is my bay. So, um, just... I don't, I don't know. Did, oh. did you birth it or something? I mean, is that what that means? Your bay? What it, does that mean? It's, it's <laughs> like, it's like my love, my like, uh, oh, special okay. somebody. We're, yeah. we're in a relationship, you know, like, wow. it's mutual. With the prowler. Okay. The prowler true. is like, All right, true. people right. trying to drag me out of my prowler. I have actually gotten angry, um, at their suggestion mm. that I would get in another ship right now. I can understand that. I, that's what I, that's what I feel when I'm in my eclipse, actually. I love my eclipse. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Segalian and Ace discussing whether or not uh, they're hipsters and whether or not it's caused by something inside the shakes. This yeah. Is, this is all possible. This is all possible. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've <laughs> partaken. Just saying. So, the wow. have either of you flown the Prowler? No. Okay. Not yet. I don't own one. All right. I will let you guys like borrow to... mine after the show, okay? I really have. It, it looks like, you know... Well, I won't. No, never mind. It looks like a shrimp. It's okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a flying shrimp of death, but you should fear it, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, I'm allergic to sell shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it'll, it'll kill you. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, really. It's a king, <laughs> it's a king prawn. It's a, there you it's go. It's kill you. Oh, man. That was good. Uh, anyway. But okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, keep going though. Tell us about so, it. So um, yeah, I've been raving about the Prowler for a long time now, and I'm really, really happy with their execution on it. Uh, when it first came out in the PTU, there was some pretty rough edges. There was uh, one of the funny things I found was while I was testing the ship, I found a way to get into debug mode while I was like, so when you turned the Prowler on left and came back in through the ladder it would spawn you into the ship in debug mode which apparently runs all the animations at like a quarter speed so you can see all the frames i was still getting a mm -hmm. high frame rate but it was slowing all my animations down so i think that they use that to make sure the animations are lining up right but it, but the coolest part was it enabled no clip mode so i was able to fly <laughs> um by just holding down the space bar uh, but once they sorted that, I think a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, the Prowler is ridiculously expensive. Second of all, it is, uh, it is very, very strong weapon arsenal wise. It is basically, it's a, it's a heavy medium sized fighter that happens to be able to carry 16 people. It can't, uh, the way that they balance it out against the Valkyrie is it can't carry any vehicles, and that's why it has more of an arsenal. Uh, it is nimble, but it is not as nimble as other uh, small, it's not as nimble as like small fighters. So theoretically, if you were trying to tackle a Prowler or avoid it, get on its rear. It has two. Uh, like the default loadout is a fixed uh, remote turret on the top and two gimbaled size four guns. So they're size five gimbals with size four guns on it. They will pop you if you stay on their nose. Um, if you can avoid being on the nose though, you're generally okay. The cool thing is you can actually change the load out of this to have two size five guns and the two size threes, which are on the top turret. It's a, t it's a size five turret. So my hope is down the line, we can get a different kind of turret for the top that'll allow us to have a bigger gun on it. Um, so also one EMP almost fries it. That's good to know, Hankin. Uh, the, and if you get EMP'd in there, because it doesn't actually have windows, it uses screens for it, it does actually behave the way you would expect, where you lose um, you lose visibility as the pilot. So when you get EMP'd, you can't see outside anymore because the actual front of that ship is completely solid metal. So you have to get your thing started again and, and 
turn on your screens to see outside again, which I'm really pleased with them having that as a weak point. Um, but generally speaking, it's a very, very strong fighter. It's definitely going to be my bounty hunter ship of choice in the medium size bracket. Uh, but it also really fits my style. I like the exotic alien ships and I like to have a tankier heavy fighter personally. So if that style suits you, you may really enjoy the ship. I can't in good conscience recommend that anyone spend as much as I did on that ship. But if you have the free cash to spend 425, it's probably going to be 450 when it goes on sale here. It's probably going to go up to, you know, 450. Um, it's pretty pricey for a fighter ship. Uh, so make sure the standalone is 440. Okay, they, it's a 440 now. Mm -hmm. Is that war bond? And no. Okay. So the war bond is 395. Oh, that's that's actually cool. Um, mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad yeah. they at least did that. Um, yeah. And you can get the helmet if you're wanting to get just the helmet, which is a cool looking helmet, by the way. It's four bucks. Okay. And is that, and uh, the is, that now. A, is it subscriber <laughs> flare? Uh, it is, no, it, it's well, just... it, there may be subscriber flair, but. Okay. It's just, it it's doesn't... just available. Generally speaking. Yeah. It's just the available. Helmet. Okay. I might pick yeah. that up. I might pick that up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool looking helmet though. <clears throat> I have to say. So <laughs> I think the big thing is if you find yourself as a, a person who likes to fly like more bigger weapons slightly slower tankier like if you really like the vanguard you may really like the upgrade that the uh, prowler provides you in arsenal uh, but if the reason you like the vanguard is for the missiles there are no missiles on the prowler um, it's it's very fixed in its roles right and it's essentially if you were to kit it out with all size fives for me especially right now it replaces what the glaive had been able to do the glaive hasn't been able to really be my fighter in a long time it was my primary fighter for a very long time though and mm. so honestly like most of this year i've been really sad about the fact that i just haven't been able to use my glaive i've been holding on to it irrationally all year um just in hopes that there is a rework and that, that it'll become a fighter worth fighting. Um, right. And so let's see here. If we, if we want to look here at what we've got for three, nine out, I've got characters, the prison uniforms in polishing microtech collections in polishing. We've got the prisons polishing Babbage polishing. All the moons are in polishing. Uh, we've got, the 3D navigation collision avoidance and pathfinding. Again, those are in place and just getting tested by us. Then we've got, you know, looks like all of the gameplay elements. They're saying they're in the one ship. The Prowler is in and that really it looks like, as far as they're concerned, everything for this is done and just kind of getting tweaked. So hopefully we'll we'll see some balancing. My my hope is they'll see the feedback from us and balance out the the new prison times, just to be a little bit more re reasonable. The weather locomotion stuff is really nice. Um, by the way, anyone who has questions about the game or for any of us, go ahead and start putting them in chat. Now is a good time for us to start. Ask, answering questions that you guys have um, and okay. then looking at 4 uh, for those of you guys who missed it they did take off the uh, they, they took Orison Landing off and uh, I I haven't seen it come back so that is something that's been a big concern for folks <laughs> right um, yep no mag boots <laughs> yep no bag boots yeah uh yeah for context guys originally the prowler was supposed to be coming out with mag boots because logically as a ship that is designed to take on larger ships with a crew 
the idea of that stealth prowler is that your troops are supposed to be able to just walk out the door, use their mag boats, and stick to the surface of a large ship to break in. That's the mm -hmm. gameplay loop that they're meant to do in space. It's why it has the bigger guns. It's supposed to be facing off and distracting a large ship. Um, it's not really designed to be, you know, focusing on really small fry. You were promised crossbows? Rolo, when the heck did they promise crossbows? Wrong game, Rolo. This is this is lies. <laughs> this is lies. All right, Very so much so. Looking But I like the idea. The idea is good. <laughs> I mean, it looks like they're just going to be doing Grim Hex improvements and new shop locations for new Babbage uh, on 4.0 now as far as locations go. So that's a pretty big thing to drop. I am kind of glad that they've chosen to drop it early so that they're not setting poor expectations and just dropping it like last minute, kind of like they did with the Idris. Mm. Right? Yeah. And so... Yeah, uh, let's see here. What else we got? So that what's delivered? SE. De what do you mean soda delivered? What did soda deliver? Crossbows. Lots of games have crossbows, Rolo. <laughs> okay. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So locations. Yeah, I don't see right now. If we look at the roadmap here. Let me let me show the roadmap, and uh, what do you guys see in the in the future here this year that you're excited for? Ace, you got it. Got anything that you know I'm is on the roadmap you're pretty excited I, for? I have, but I'm gonna bring it up here just to see if I didn't. I don't want to forget something. Yeah, there there are a few things I'm very excited. I'm. My primary focus usually when it in regards to the roadmap, um, well, historically, it's been really, really focused on the AI, right? I want the AI to be the most incredible AI ever, you know? And, of course, you know, quanta, uh, you know, quantum and all the quanta running around in it. Um, I want them to start slowly implementing that. I'm excited about that. Then, of okay. course, there's always theaters of war. But I'm very excited about that. And a lot of my community members are. So, where, where is theaters yeah. of war on the roadmap? They haven't. Okay, they it's haven't. not on there. Yeah, so they haven't put it. So no, they haven't put it on. You're interested so, in the yeah. AI elements that are coming in in 4.0 and 4.1, which, which is FPS combat weapon types and cover usage. And then we've got realistic weapon handling, AI hazard awareness, avoidance, and combat improvement polishing. Uh, the, so, he, he, here's the thing I, I want what, what Chris Roberts wants he wants a living breathing universe yeah. right I want this incredible universe with spaceships flying everywhere the you know NPCs are running to do what they got to do they're flying places they're getting out they're running in places doing their daily activities that's uh, that's going to be an amazing day when I see him start doing that kind of thing Star Citizen not just Tools on the does mats. have a crossbow. <laughs> Rolo just gave us a link. Apparently, they did promise a crossbow at some point they, in time. They have talked about it. They promised everything. All right, so we got some questions here. They have here. talked about it. Cool. Um, <laughs> all Linux Gamer says, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? It's impossible to know. I always bite them. What about you, Ace? Do you yes, always bite same. them? What about you, it's Aussie? So good. Have you ever like, um, licked them all the way to the middle? No. No? Like when I was a kid, no. Mm -mm. I, I have this horrible habit of, of, of hard candy, and I just, uh, well, even uh, ice cubes, I just chomp. I, I, I'm sorry. I just, um, gump, gump, yeah. gump. that's it. I'm it's all done. So. <laughs> I'm definitely a cruncher, too. It's a, yeah, you know, I'm a cruncher. Yeah. Good crunchy um, ice. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's here's a here's a more valid question. Uh, but uh, what is your favorite in-game food item right now? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have one yet. Um, well, yeah. Anything keto? <laughs> <laughs> right. They, I've I've noticed a lot of excitement about the double hot dog. 
Yes, it's amazing. The double hot dog. That's it's sad. one bun and two hot dogs. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, and then uh, uh -huh. oh, see, I just I got a lot nope, of joy nope. from the rage that people had at the the very vegan friendly restaurant. And they were like, no, I don't right. even want to go there. Don't even go there. No. <laughs> right. Some yeah. of the stuff does look good. Just yeah. Saying. Yeah. I mean, like, I went, like, it's the first place I went. It's just so bright. And like, you know, it just looks cheerful. And they're like, what are you doing? And eventually you find the burger joint and you're like, okay, okay. I'm eating the burger. And we'll like sneak in a veggie burger just to offend them. Um, Cause they have them. I, this is true. I think what my favorite thing so far about the food elements is that you really do have a lot of variety um yeah. and yeah. what i felt personally was that they did a very good job balancing the need to eat i was really worried that it was going to turn into a game like uh you know uh oh, oh, i forgot the name of it so it doesn't yeah. matter. But uh, you know those games where you basically have to eat a whole Tyrannosaurus Rex every 30 minutes? and Like, like Ark? Yeah, like Ark. I was really worried it was going to turn into Ark, where I need yep. to run and kill another dinosaur, and I have to have, like, pockets full of, like, mm -hmm. hundreds of pounds of meat just to, like, keep myself from passing out from hunger, right? But they, they reassured us many times, and so far they've delivered on making it reasonable, being like, it only goes down you know 10 percent in an hour i can deal with that right like that's yeah. that's reasonable yeah. and and it seemed like they went down quicker when i was sprinting and stuff and more reasonable pace when i wasn't so like yep. it was it was a pretty believable set um the uh it looks like old Linus gamer loves torpedo burrito uh nope. ace taiko what, <laughs> what's your favorite food the uh so i have a i have a couple answers i have the the fun answer the hot double hot dog is amazing, and all the hot dog varieties are amazing. But I still haven't gotten to eat some amazing space pizza. That's my favorite food. So good. So good. Anyway, but the other practical answer that I love gameplay-wise, you know, mid-max and optimizing and all that, plus it just actually looks pretty good. Or like smoothies, for instance, you know? Yeah. It, it Since you're, if you're talking about pure mechanics and somewhat like real life, your hydration goes down quicker than the nutritional needs, right? And so you get the smoothie and you get the hydration more than, I think it's a smoothie, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but the smoothie helps you keep your hydration up and gives you a little bit of nutrition so you actually stay optimized and it's really, really good. And you can stash it in your pack. Whereas the other food items, you can't stash them in your pack yet. And I'm going to have all the burritos in my pack, just saying, with a few hot yeah. dogs on top, you know, you got to have good measure. I need okay. to test so. to see whether or not you can exit normally and come back in and still have those food items in your pack. Because in the earlier versions, they weren't mm -hmm. persisting. Um, they were, they were, I think they are now. Did they for you? Okay, um, awesome. I, I think, but I... I, yeah, I don't know. It is, it is basically a space Jamba juice. And yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know if anyone has found, like I couldn't get the cheese. Cat was, Cat was saying her favorite was the cheese. I did a, I did a whole YouTube like video of just me talking that? about all of the cheese. Where is the cheese? The, so the, the you, I didn't cheese. find cheese you could actually Must. eat, but like, it was like when they first oh, added food to the new bab, like to the uh, to the yeah. orbital above <laughs> New Babbage. That's oh, where they like showed it okay. off, and like they just okay. had these cups of steaming cheese everywhere. I think some of them were supposed to be lemonade, but I just called it all cheese because it wasn't very clear. Um, <laughs> it was just like large, large quantities of viscous-looking cheese. Um, Absolutely. Don't we all dream of this? <laughs> I know, that's what I want to put in cheese. my pockets. Okay, God. like just that would oh. be perfect for Aussie and me, right? Oh. Like totally keto. Right. Just Sounds down incredible. the hatch, mm. down the get a hatch. good mozzarella, and yeah. just get it all melty and incredible, and just oh, it's so good. Oh, or just straight up cold <laughs> out of the fridge. No, <laughs> like, either way, I'm okay. I'm down. What dream are I'm they down. selling now? 
<laughs> and, and J Mitch just wants mm-hmm. to be able to just wants to be able to do Benny's big big Benny's uh, uh, right. They're, they're like the ramen noodle type where, things, right? But where are they? I think they would have to get a. They have a big Benny's place. Jeez. They have a restaurant on Lorville. Is Come it not on, possible? Sig. Is it not possible to eat those yet? <laughs> I I haven't been there yet. I feel like uh, that's Lord, a fail. Lorville killed me the past three times. I, I think went. like take a star off of the game, guys. I'm sorry. Big, big I mean, Benny's. If I can't have my big Benny, not part of why, the premier why? launch of food. Where's the coffee? That's why am I, I even know. playing? Absolutely. So, Where's the coffee? Absolutely. So you know you 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 asked Jeez. um uh Ace about what he's most excited for. I'll tell you what I'm most excited for in the next two patches. What are you most excited for? Is the Hudry work. And here's why yes. I say this, and I was yes. I was telling Ace about this yesterday. So if you've never followed um Z Design uh from Deviant oh. Art, he's actually an employee of Star Citizen who's done a lot of the HUD work. And his art is really, really amazing. Awesome. Um, he does some fantastic HUD work, even outside the realm of Star Citizen. So I'm really excited to see the new HUD work. And I'm really hoping that from the glimpses that I've seen of what he can do and the vibrance of what Star Citizen is, I'm really looking forward to the HUD work. So, um, but the second thing that I'm excited for, of course, is Star Runner. So those are the two things that I'm looking forward to. But I want my mag boots put back on the the list. And I want my darn mag boots, guys. That's what I want. (laughs) And it had nothing to do with the Prowler. (laughs) So, so what excites you about the mag boots so much? Um... I have, there's this issue that I had uh, way back in, well, first of all, I'm terrified of heights, even though I was in the military and all that kind of stuff and actually, you know, repelled out of helicopters, Um, (laughs) which is what I did for part of my job. Um, But I have a, a fear of heights and... I when I started playing World of Warcraft a long time ago, I was actually terrified of flying in World of Warcraft. Um, and then I got over that. But for some reason, I've never been terrified uh, or um, uh, have this adjacency issue uh, until I got back into Star Citizen. So when I first started playing Star Citizen, I have this adjacency issue when I started doing that Kovalax mission where now I know it's a little different now, but you actually used to go in and there were eight uh, data pads littered across the Kovalax. And I had horrible claustrophobic adjacency issues with EVA in the structure of that building for some reason. Gotcha. And I haven't felt like that since I was in World of Warcraft. And I don't know what it is about closed spaces and EVAing, but I have a horrible issue with it. So in my mind, having mag boots alleviates that issue because now I can get on the ground solidly and then walk to whatever that destination is. And if I have to take the elevator up or down, I just unlock the mag boots and then go up or down. Um, you know, and and lock back in, and uh, cat. I don't have a dizzy problem. See, that's that's what I don't understand about what makes it so much. It just more makes you terrifying. uncomfortable, right? It's very it's like, uncomfortable, like, a, like really disquieting. And I, I think I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, and thank you for the follow, Space Guy Hawk. Thank you. Um, um, I can't use VR, by the way, Sigelian, because I suffer from chronic migraines, and that would be very bad in my pupula- pupillary distance. I like pupillary issues. distance. Pupillary distance issues. <laughs> that too. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, you, really, the, the idea is that when you're in a no gravity situation to be able to lock yourself onto a surface and to give yourself some sense of a plane that is down would be really helpful. Um, And I don't have a problem in space that 
that I don't have a problem with. Yeah. You know, space is relative, up, down, left, right, port, whatever you want to call it. It's it's when I'm confined. And I'm not claustrophobic, but for some reason I get this this angsty feeling. And if I could have those mag boots, then I wouldn't feel so disoriented when I'm in that situation. So, yeah, they... I know it's complicated. <laughs> now, it, it makes sense, right? Like when you're in a tight space and well, particularly those spaces tend to be pretty aggressively filled with crap as well floating around yeah, yeah, so yeah there's there's they purposely make those locations uncomfortable what i'm really personally excited about for the mag boots is breaking into other people's ships in a in a like intended gameplay way like the idea of dropping people down letting them stick onto ships also for going through those tunnels and stuff, but it's particularly, it's going to allow something that we haven't been able to use so far, which is turning off the gravity in our ship as a way to defend ourselves. Yeah. It's exciting, right? Yeah. Because if we know we've got people with mag boots on and they're ready to go inside our ship, one of the first things that we're going to do is vent and turn off the gravity Pilot's just going to keep on trucking and we're going to send mm. our defense troops in and hope that folks are caught unaware when they come into the ship and there's mm. no gravity. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's also something you might do to, to flip things around, just cycle it on and off just to mess with people. Right. This ability to, to introduce that is going to really dramatically change the experience but mainly I was, I was hoping that we would see ourselves moving more towards that emergent gameplay that I'd like to see with capitals having uh, this going in thing. The same thing we saw with the 890 jump mission. So it's clearly on their radar, right? Going into a capital ship, clearing it and taking over or doing some kind of objective is going to be a big part of gameplay for FPS players moving forward. Um, and any progress in that direction, that's where it helps me connect as a pilot with the players that I'm really enjoying learning from, which are the FPS dedicated players. Cause that's not really normally my skill set. I've learned a lot because of the passion that I have for protecting my ship about how to pull the trigger on a game gun. Like I wasn't really an FPS player before that. Mm-hmm. So that's Ace, cool, man. That Ace, what about that. you? What What are you excited about? You said you were you had hyped up the whole mag boot thing, and then were really disappointed about it disappearing from the roadmap. Well, I mean, in terms of roadmap, like I mentioned, of course, the AI I'm excited about, but more like tangible sort of stuff, like gameplay and other stuff like that. I mean, yeah, mag boots was actually something I went on about for probably I don't know twenty minutes or something on my stream one time or a few times. And uh, because it comes down to being able to interact with the universe, right? With the world around you. And I'm, I'm just excited for that sort of thing. I'm excited for some of the, like the litter, litter, litter things, all the little things like body dragging and stuff like that. Um, you know, interacting with your teammates, being able to do medical gameplay with your teammates and or maybe an AI. Let's say an AI has a crash ship. And you have to get there quickly and it's on a timer or let's say those ecn missions let's say you do an ecn mission you save the day but they're injured and they need your help so you have to and the other side of boarding a ship right right it's, uh, i'm on board with you that does sound exciting and i did play on words there and so the thing is <laughs> is that um you have to go in and do medical gameplay and help somebody help an npc out in their ship and save them otherwise they're going to die and maybe you don't get paid or maybe you get bonus pay if you do or you get a really cool reputation with a certain guild or they remember you and they spread word about you and i don't know maybe they'll give you a little extra pay if that's what it's all about i don't know just and you know little stuff like that I went off on a little tangent there, a little, a little, a little dream, you know, yeah. but in terms of, of what's coming up, um, like body dragging is exciting. Um, a lot of the, uh, where was body dragging the, on the red map? It's a 4.0. Okay. So Excellent. it's coming up hopefully soon, hopefully. 
that means we can interact with our friends, you know, and maybe people won't die. Like they mentioned, they're going to have the downed state and they're going to bleed out or they're going to be unconscious instead of dying immediately. You have a small sliver of opportunity to save your friends. And like they have now, you can pick up, you can drop and pick up the medipins, right? And if you can like drop one of those or you can somehow grab it in your hand and use it on your friends, you can stabilize them from bleeding out or maybe wake them up in, in the middle of a cave. You can't possibly, you know, can't bring them to your ship quickly enough in time or something. You know, I'm excited for that kind of stuff. So your body dragon's coming up. Let me see what else here. There was something else. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Like the law system surrendering. That's pretty interesting, right? Yeah. You're interacting. You have something to do other than just die. You yeah. know? <laughs> no, I think that that's like. Um, so, yeah. I I think that if they really are going to be able to bring in the dragging and stuff like that, that'll help balance out mm -hmm. some of these elements, too, because it's going to give you a chance mm -hmm. to not go to prison if yeah, you've got your you buddies go. with you to save you and stuff. And I think that'll really help. The idea, Absolutely. the idea that you have some opportunities to avoid negative consequences are going to be really sure. important with how negative con those consequences are. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, you brought up some really good points earlier. You yeah. know, yeah. And so, anyway, I, 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 so it, just to wrap up a little bit, I, I'm excited. Like for now, like the uh, like the uh, contact list, being able to work with your friends, group up your with your friends, do stuff with your friends. That is so, so critical for the success of a game, right? And, well, especially an MMO, right? This yeah. type of game. And I am so, so excited about that. I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to expand upon that. So, yeah. Yeah. And then Old Lennox Gamer says he'd, he'd prefer over mag boots, the, uh, the kind of like where you grab things around. Yeah, yeah, like the push pull in 4.1, you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I think push pull is going to. Uh, partly resolve that it'll be interesting to see if we can actually grab onto random surfaces uh, you know what I, I i i i was wrong i'm sorry that it was supposed to be part of the eva stuff but yeah. that on the roadmap is you're pushing and pulling objects not yeah. yourself that's... maybe that's the same thing does anybody know i, I i'm not sure anyway i, I don't want to misspeak and say yeah. something wrong yeah, so the, the idea was that the, the idea of being able to throw an object and have it push you backwards realistically, but also to be able to like grab onto objects or each other potentially uh, while you're in a zero-G environment. Um, I think they're also going to be introducing... So, so what we noticed here in the prison escape, right, is they're really enjoying having platformer-type challenges. My yes, expectation right? is we're going to have more of these kind of puzzles throughout the game. Uh, kind of that Zelda thing where you have to push a boulder over to be able to climb up it. Maybe something we encounter with push-pull fully in place where we have to push a large crate to reveal a location that we can now go to. That's a potential possibility based on what we've seen from them demonstrating. Uh, Aussie, do you have anything to say around push-pull since we're talking about it? I, I can see him moving himself around. <laughs> right? That's what I'm doing. There you go. Oh, hey, there we there go. go. I'm sorry. There I had go. my music, my, my mic muted because um, I was typing. Uh, but no, um, you know, anything that enhances your character, I, I think that's fantastic. The push-pull, I don't know how I would use it in my type of gameplay. Um, I either sit in a cockpit or, you know make videos and explore and fly upside down. I love that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm not sure how I would use it, but I know where it would be useful. I was like, maybe I could just knock Ace out and drag him around for a while. Yeah. Yes. That, that would be fun. <laughs> yes. That would be good. I would like that. Meet just you. Drag him around behind me. I think mm -hmm. having dragging and mm -hmm. push pull kind of in tandem together, it makes sense. They're basically part of the same mechanic. Sure. Yeah, yeah, they uh, kind of right. are. But right. I... I'm seeing them putting more of these kind of like puzzle games into our gameplay. So I feel like that's part of the reason that they're pushing it in now. Uh, mm -hmm. 
it's it's helpful for the 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 first person experience to have more of these interactions with the environment though it makes it all feel a lot more real um yeah 100 percent. you know it, real quick the stuff that i keep mentioning and i hope sig puts back in i don't know you weren't around i don't think maybe you were no no i don't think no no you were around at 3.0 right so the thing is what they used to have like in a uh, Kovalec station for instance and yeah. i don't know how many in chat might remember this they used to have little like codes scattered like little data pads scattered and you could mm -hmm. find codes on them right and then you find like a locker in Kovalec that has a keypad on it and you put the code in and then you get like a shotgun that might be stored in there or some credits or a you know whatever i hope they start adding little things like that around the verse little bits of loot little bits of so to to reward you you know like like what you were saying like like when you're doing your pirate thing maybe you get a little bit of loot right yeah and yeah. Uh, stuff like that that would be really cool as well so anyway yeah it's good stuff yeah the, the um you know they used to the, the Kovalax has changed so much that Kovalax mission because that actually used to, yeah. used to be a yeah. continuation mission of four yeah. different missions together, and so I cool. miss that. I that and and we're talking about missing things. That is one thing that I missed a lot of Ooh. is the fact that it built upon the main mission of Kovalax, and then there was three other parts to it, and now it's all separated. So, which which That's, I kind of don't enjoy those separated quests. So that makes sense. Let's uh, let's give a big thank you and shout out to TV Liquid, another night crew member raiding with a party of forty three. Everyone, welcome from uh, awesome. TV Liquid's show. I hope you guys had a great night. I've got Ace Tycho, Asapita, and I'm Gandora Olap. We are hosting NC on SC right now. And it, it is the time for us to answer questions about 3.9 or uh, any other Star and related matters, if you're at all interested. Um, welcome, everyone. I hope you had a fabulous time. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it a couple times so far, but I want to make sure you guys all know. Make sure to give a follow to all these beautiful people in the night crew. They are fabulous streamers, excellent people. Um, even when they're not streaming actively, uh, we can we can peer pressure them so that they'll uh, they'll stream more often, right, Ace? Absolutely, um, those slackers yeah. got. <laughs> and so, absolutely, I really appreciate it. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> that I think what you're also highlighting lighting on the Aussie and Ace when you're talking about these missions is this this idea. Of, first of all. Uh, a continuation from yes. session to session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Building yeah. towards concepts like reputation and stuff. And I personally would really like to see that. It, you know, bounty hunting right now is one of the few ones that actually has continuation mm -hmm. where you at least have to unlock things in order to get another set. Yeah. Um, and it's I, true. But however, you know, the, there's. It, it, it is true the bounty hunting does have that 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 part of it but how many people remember teresa like it was just said in chat if you remember teresa true. then you know exactly who i'm talking about which true. is really amusing to me because teresa is the most important person back you know in 2015 and now where's teresa so it's like people still talk about Teresa. So obviously there was something there and then yeah. they separated it and got rid of Teresa. So yeah, where is Teresa? You know, yeah, to, to, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like, well, you brought up an excellent point and you could tie in the Kovalex mission. It's just like Tessa Bannister, right? Or whatever, or whatnot. Uh, say her name, right? Singulian? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, anyway, think, yeah. um, it's just like the Kovalex mission when you're helping that woman find out more information about her husband, right? Right. And it adds depth. It adds interest. It adds engagement. It adds something It, get, it more, adds meaning whatever, to right? the actual It adds thing meaning. Right. Great word. Right. Great word. Absolutely. 100%. What's up, Raven Queen? Good to see you. Thanks for the shout out. Yeah. Good to see you. Anyway, um, and everybody else in chat, of course. But <laughs> anyway. But particularly um, Raven. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's right. I saw my name pop up like, what? what? I'm, I'm acknowledged, everybody. I'm a person. 
anyway, it's really cool stuff. It just it, the Star Citizen community is one of the best. It's just ah, anyway, the hype is real and goes on forever for me with Star Citizen especially. But it, like you said, it adds meaning, it adds depth, it adds something special, right? Something tangible. And like, well, something they showed the other day with like the uh, like like all the um, all the, like the cargo s- spots. They said like the uh, Traders Guild or something, right? They said guild, and it's like cool. Is that going to mean you're going to walk in there and it's part of like a more fleshed out guild system where you get perks and rewards and you get you know like bonuses and other stuff. You know, I, I don't know all sorts of neat little details and depth and meaning. Like you said, with a bounty system, right? Yeah. I don't know. Bounty hunter system, right? Stuff like that. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Good stuff. A little rambly there, but I'm excited. Such awesome stuff. Oh, man. And to make sure that we saw that. And I agree with, with Jaden's comment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got yeah. into bounty hunting because there was no PI missions. And my mm-hmm. favorite thing to do in the game is PI missions. Because yeah. I fell in love with the Kovalax mission from back in the day um and i love that mission and i would do that mission over and over and over and over and over again i never got tired of it you know yeah Uh, but you know finding bodies in a cave isn't really a pi to me because there's no reward to that as a matter of fact the reward is getting stuck and lost in the cave that's your reward (laughs) yeah really (laughs) i i think that like yeah the the idea of a private investigation where you're not just finding dead people because i i did find that a little bit disturbing that i'm just like you know posing with dead people and being like oh let me search oh yep you're dead yep you're dead yep you're dead Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I really would like to see the next stage of medical gameplay. Maybe now with push pull, we could even, we could just say, Hey, they're incapacitated when you find them and you have a timer mm. for them to like, that way you there can you get go. like a bonus if you yep. get them within mm. X amount of time by dragging them back to your <laughs> ship. Right. And then you could have them like come back. What I would love to see would be them coming back to consciousness on your ship and just like roaming around your ship and you take them back to the port. That would be super cool because it would like lead into individual transport missions. And that would actually open up a whole new career field that a lot of people actually really enjoy. Like the 600 I dedicated to that job, just go load it up with passengers and hope you can get some high class passengers so you can get good money. Maybe get Mm. chased down by their ex who happens to be a pirate lord, um, <laughs> right? I like, like this. Like, I like with, this. with a shot collar. Yeah, yeah. Like I, not, I want... not a shot collar. Shot collar. Oh yeah. man, that's a shot collar. Shot collar. I thought I was like, <laughs> Wait, oh, what? she's wearing a shot collar. Why didn't she take it off? Uh-huh. Oh, maybe it was bonded. Uh-huh. Um, it's right. So it's right. Yeah, it's these, this gameplay where you feel like you're really actually interacting with the NPCs. <sighs> That's really critical. Even if it's just through a progression in your missions, those things that like Mm. you, you have to unlock, they create this kind of connection with the game that you don't get when you're just doing these isolated events. Um, And I feel like if you had a little bit more detail, when you go out bounty hunting and be like this guy, he killed a bunch of people at this location and you need to take him out because he's going here next and we're worried that he's going to do blah right versus you're authorized to murder this person go have fun right like yeah i I think there is a disconnect there because like we said in that original pi mission she talked to us through yeah. all four missions. It's really and, cool. And what the difference yeah. between those bounty hunter missions and some of the PI missions now is the only way that we get to hear any interaction is on the data pads or the computers yeah. inside yeah. of whatever we're scouting. And even the bounty hunters, it's just text. Yeah. It's like, okay, all right, it's text. There you go. Have fun. And, yeah. um, so. it, 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 you brought up that point about like the uh, like the bodies, right? Trying to 
find those people yeah, that, are, really cool. that are lost. And the one thing that that my community was excited about in regards in regards to Star Citizen is we want to do uh, like disaster and emergency response, humanitarian aid, because that's the kind of community yeah. we are. We're a warm, welcoming community that likes to help people, that likes to work together, that likes to try to do some good. You know, not always. We like to mix it up and have some adventure and stuff. Maybe a little bit of, you know, gray area sort of ops or something, you know. Just anyway, a, just but, a uh, bit murdery, but, but mostly care bears. Yeah, sh- what? Huh? No, no, just, just, Julie, you know, I, 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 have I, little accidents. I have met, <laughs> happy little accidents. met and talked to somebody <laughs> in the star citizen community that is the leader of, and he didn't admit to this right away. It was really <laughs> funny. He was talking to me because, uh, EN seven is attached to, uh, SAR operations as well. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so I am sort of excited about that. The, my interests are a little bit different, but from a SAR perspective, I, I do love the concept and idea behind it. But he came to me and started talking to me, and I found out what he is planning. He is a pirate SAR group, which su- surprised me. I have never heard anybody wanting to go that route in a SAR unit. So. What's, I was very right, surprised. What SAR stand for? Can you break down uh, the search accuracy? and rescue? Search and, yeah. Okay, so he's a search yeah. and rescue. So he rescues the ships from their pilots. Mm-hmm. Gives yes. them a, a better rightful <laughs> home. Uh huh. That makes sense. So mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like some of those those places that come and rescue your pet, right? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> they <Yeah>. like. A, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that is interesting. Search and rescue. Yeah. You know, rescuing Pirates. ships from their owners. Yeah. Liberates. That's pretty, right. Pretty they liberates, yeah. liberates liberates the ships them. from go. their owners. Right. <laughs> so we have a couple people saying a few things in chat here, yeah. Yeah. Do we have uh do we have any good questions here? So somebody's mentioning something to OC in regards to the bigger discussion is linked missions right that yeah yeah they yeah. they've um, been in yeah i agree sailor they've been around for a very very long time my point was is that they've broken that up in into smaller chunks and divvied it up and got rid of Teresa from the kovalax that was my point is i'm interested in the in not in the escape loop pirate stuff i'm interested in the investigation loop and yes they've absolutely. they've removed the linking of those missions yeah so whether yeah. or not there's missions that are linked for the escape is completely different than what i was talking about is they used to link them the pi missions together and now mm. they are separated well, it's so like that's, what that's Jaden. What I'm talking about jaden mentioned yeah. about how yeah. like, kovalex the or at least the investigators in the investigation, at least, um, into her husband and the death, and they basically yeah. p- pinned everything. It's like yeah, what Jaden said yeah. about how um, Elaine um, gives you a little mm-hmm. extra because you went that extra step yeah. trying to clear her husband, yeah. or not clear, but give a more well, give the the truth about what actually happened, and then how it continues on. But keep going, yeah. Yeah, Sailor said that Teresa is co- she is coming back. I I, I did hear yes. that, and I am yes. excited yeah. to hear about that. But is it Tessa or Tessa, Teresa? Teresa, whatever her name I was. Think it's Anyways, Tessa, right? Anyway, doesn't Tessa? Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. been so long since I've heard her voice. I know, and it's so sad. <laughs> We're all very sad. Sig. Come on. Come so, on. so so I think anyway. that like it's it's been pretty clear that their goal is to to get these missions in play but I I think that sure. where they're focused sure. right now makes sense. They need to Absolutely. like they have been listening gameplay, to us right? and they're doing gameplay game loops. Gameplay. Their careers, need gameplay. gameplay loops and things yep. to do. The more of those and the more core systems they come out with. Those are really really critical. 100% man. So, 100%. As much as I would like to see Orison landing if it means that meshing is coming out in 4 dude, I'll yes. shut my mouth. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Yes. I will just like, yeah. my bad. I, I'm sorry that I bitched, but at the end right. of the day, right? Like I want them to be, 
covering all these bases because the smartest Gameplay thing loops, to do, man. the smartest thing yeah. to do in agile development right now is get your core system sorted and get all of the key jobs that players are going to be doing in the game so we can start balancing them. And, and they don't then have to be we can throw locations right? out like we just over and over and over, right? Yeah, and keep it simple, right? Put out something simple. Don't overcomplicate it, right? Just yeah. put something out there. Put little gameplay, core gameplay loops in, right? The way little they did things. the medical gameplay, that was perfect. I'm sure someone was, like, really worried that it was too lazy. Yeah. But it was yeah. perfect. Yep, okay? it's a start. Like, it's a start, it, right? Right? You can make it more complicated, but as long as you're like, at some point, they're going to wake up in the bed. And we don't have push and pull. We don't have the ability to drag bodies. We can't put them in the bed right now. And we can't really distinguish between the severity of death. So let's set a radius around our medical ships and say, if you're set to spawn there, you spawn there. Um, hey, Raven, yeah, Raven with Queen, the thank you for the sub. Thank you for supporting the night crew. Thank you. Oh, Ky Kyoga. Thank you so much. Very awesome. Thank you, Raven. Gifted subs. To Thank Raven. you everybody for the Fabulous. support. Heck Se yeah. Seriously, guys. And everyone here. Thanks, guys. Guys. This is This is Thank my you. first time running the show. We already had some hiccups at the beginning. Thank you all for, like, <laughs> sticking it out. Ace, Hanging in Aussie, there. thank you for being here. And and, uh, and I want to thank Penguins in particular for jumping in and helping me, <laughs> you know, get Saving the right the day, key man. so that I could uh, push things live. <laughs> um, Saving the day. But yeah, absolutely. If you guys have any feedback, if there's any audio issues, anything like that, let me know. I want to make sure to take that into effect when I redo this for the next show. I'll be hosting the one uh, Thursday after next. Uh, and any more questions and stuff yeah, too, right? This Let's is get about those our last, last, minute, last, questions last minute questions now. Uh, we have about 10 minutes, give or take, give or take, right? Yeah. Or unless we're going a little late because we started late. I mean, we started to, late, so I think we could so go We could go maybe to just like a little 10 bit after, maybe. right? You got, you guys got like Teeny weeny bit. Little bit, just Cause, a little. Because yeah. uh, well, Nana OC is, is, is getting tired. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. So uh, will iCash come for 4 0? So iCash oh, is man. not in the core tech list i don't see iCash or server meshing anywhere i think it's like a lot of these other big ticket items that they are choosing to not put on the roadmap because they're not 100 percent confident on their ability to deliver it right now because they have unknowns so i where some people are really offended by it as someone who is a developer manager i understand where you're just trying to mitigate some of you don't want to make a promise you know you may not be able to keep sure and yeah and yeah. this the roadmap represents promises basically and historically they've over promised and under delivered so i'm okay with them over delivering and under promising that is a smarter way to go about things as someone Happy who delivers software right, right? yeah i, I Happy I'm, surprises and so I think that they're on the right track there. Obviously, I would be okay with seeing exactly what they're working on right now, but I do understand we're looking at a front-facing tool that not everyone is psychologically able to handle changing on a regular basis. Um, personally, I would be happy to see each individual ticket they were working on. That's the level of granularity that I'm interested in. But I'm a broken, broken project manager at heart, so that's just that's just me inside. Um, yeah, good point. We got one question. Okay, so developers don't yeah. want to do that. Marketing does. PMs do. POs my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, mean, now, I see a big say? question. All right, there yeah. are still plenty of food joints that aren't truly open, like the coffee and pizza shops. Do you think this is because since those foods usually come? many in a box they might be usable over time and save like drinks i think that would make sense i think the biggest problem is that they've basically chosen a couple venues to activate though and that anything that isn't fitting the standard style of animation for drinking or humming uh just it's not in it's not in the cards right now because they needed to push out the basic mechanics 
uh, I would like to see being able to buy a crate of like really crappy food though. Like personally, I would just load up my hammerhead with a bunch of refried beans like I've always been promising was going to be delivered out of that machine. I want to I wanted to get to the point where I can take a big a big like vat of beans and put it inside that machine and have people go up with a styrofoam cup and have it pour like fill the cup with bean and then they're like yum 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 yum. Um that's that's what I want to see. Uh, but I think they have to add like a, a sadness meter to your character if that's going to be the case. You know, if they're going to have really, really terrible foods. Um, <laughs> it slows you down or yeah. Uh, let's see here. I think that <clears throat> particularly when you're looking at the long term perspective, a lot of ships are billeted as having cargo capacity specifically for the purpose of carrying food and water and stuff like that so it's gonna make sense for us to be able to purchase like whole units of food supplies i uh, i don't think it makes sense for us to have to go and individually buy every sandwich if we're trying to outfit for a whole crew because so that's the perspective i'm looking at what do, what do you guys think about that start with aussie uh My crew is me, myself, and I. <laughs> she gets no. all of the burritos. That, that's, I, that's her answer. I mean, mm -hmm. I get all the burritos. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. It's I know, right? Worst the worst keto food ever is oh, burritos. All the cheese. And, and, and beans. Beans and more <laughs> cheese. And then you have to melt the cheese I want to know. I want to know if there's going to be a possibility that if I bring in a food cargo uh, cargo shipment, is if I can physically break into that and have all the food. Can I get into that shipping crate and take out the food? That's what I want to know. They did show on a video where you can't open up boxes eventually. So... So I would just keep, keep, if that was the case, I would just keep, you know, all the food I could possibly keep in just for me. I could live like a king for months this is and true. years, you know, because my cargo would be full of just food. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think particularly, so, so for those of you who aren't aware, they are just like they're looking at having players go into a disabled state they are looking to have ships go into a disabled state and to make it much harder to explode a ship as we approach the point where we'll actually be able to use escape craft and stuff like that uh, anything that's above or at medium size is going to have a disabled state that you get to in order for us to have actual bounty hunting and actual you know on foot escape ability as opposed to what it is currently which is you run out of health and you explode sucks to be yeah right. true. so That's so true. when we get to that point then it's going to start making more sense for us to have more of our items on our larger ships right our carrick is going to actually have some of our extra weapons and our extra flight suits it's going to have a bunch of food supplies and we're going to go out and do missions with it with an understanding that as long as we're taking care of it we're not going to be losing all those items and we're not going to go have to spend a hundred two hundred thousand on supplies just because someone decided they were going to ram into us um that's uh, that is what I really would want to see. I'm worried about it when we come into yeah. iCash yeah. that if we're still popping ships as quickly as we are right now, yeah, everyone's just, everyone's just going to be in flight suits. You'll have a good handgun point. and a flight yep. suit, right? And that's it. And we're like, well, I didn't have the right one for the environment. I guess I'll die. I'm not going to risk having a hundred K worth of equipment on this ship. You can bring your own stuff, but if it blows up, I'm not liable. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. And apparently our bots are feuding right now, according to Jay. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, something KP and what I'm going to have to look at after the show. It's all <laughs> good. 
It's extra Kappa. Why are they fighting with each other? <laughs> Stream Elements is trying to talk. And Streamlabs is like, no. Streamlabs no, timed out Stream talk. Elements for one second. Shut up! <laughs> Shut so, up, Streamlabs. No, Streamlabs, Stream I am funny. the one here who will speak. <laughs> uh, God bless. Apparently <laughs> one of them doesn't deserve mod privileges. Abuse right. of mod privileges, bot. It's right. God. So, Jeez. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have... Any more questions? I uh, I think uh, we've covered everything pretty well in depth. Big takeaways, Absolutely. I would say, are if you're jumping into 3.9, be aware that the penalties for crime are very harsh right now. They are not balanced where I hope that they will end up balanced. Mm -hmm. And work with a team when you're trying to pull off something very villainous. Uh, my recommendation, like now it actually matters. Turn off those, those satellites, right? If you want to go do a villainous thing, have one of your guys go turn off things. Uh, if you're talking, you're muted, Aussie. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking. I oh, was scratching my face. Okay. Your character was like, totally like, <laughs> yeah. Ah, ah, okay. well, it was like cool. freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's totally freaking out. <laughs> Uh, there's a global chat. I don't know about general chat, uh, Kai, in 3.9. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's still the global chat, as yep. long as you're not having a 30K. If your there global you go. chat goes away, you're still having a 30K. Um, I think overall stability is pretty okay. The big thing, though, yeah, watch out if you're a criminal. If you're not a criminal... Things are going to be pretty peachy, but be afraid of getting a crime stat. Um, and it's not like before where you can just be like, cool, just kill me then. Uh, unless you, unless you're okay with going to prison. Now, for low crime stats, you can still kind of treat it that way because it's pretty quick to get out. And, uh, and I'm hoping that they've sorted most of the issues with where you'll spawn when you uh, get out of prison. So... If any of you guys end up trapped in prison loop like me, I'm sorry. I hope they fixed it. Um, Hopefully, right? A lot of polishing. It's not perfect. It'll get better over the next few weeks. There you go. As always. There we go. So, I uh, I want to open it up. Ace, do you have any closing remarks? Well, um, in regards to the discussion or... We're gonna. Are we gonna head and? Uh, I think we're. I think we're getting close uh, to wrap up mode. Wrap I know, things up. I know who we're Sounds gonna good. raid. And uh, alrighty, man. So yeah. Um. Sounds good, dude. Uh. First of all, thank you to chat. Thank you to the team. Appreciate you guys very much. I love being here with you. I love all of y'all very very much. It's very awesome. And it's uh, it's really one of the best times of the week is when I get to hang out and have fun. And not just talk with chat, which I always love talking with chat, but hanging out with you guys as well. And these discussions are so much fun because I love, 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 love Star Citizen. It's so fun. It's so cool. And there's so much potential that continues to slowly, frustratingly slowly at times, um, get better and better, you know. And uh, it keeps showing up. And so, yeah. Anyway, guys. Oh uh, yeah, like uh, like I said at the beginning, um, I'm Ace Tycho. I am a variety streamer. You know, when I when I do stream, I'll be on in the mornings uh, between eight and twelve, afternoons uh, two and six, and that's Eastern time. And then some evenings as well. And yeah, I love uh, love hanging out with you guys in the Star Citizen community. Hopefully, I'll be working with these guys on some co streams and some awesome hangouts. And so look for us as a team to be doing stuff. And uh, come say hi to us when we're hanging out. Um, so, yeah, thanks again, guys. This was a really good discussion tonight. I loved it. So, sure. it's good stuff. What about you, Asi? Yeah, uh, I'm Ospita, and uh, I stream. I have a new schedule, so here's the new schedule. Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. I am now streaming on Fridays, and I start at 2 o'clock and go until my ticker can't take it anymore because I'm old. So, uh, Star Citizen usually what? ends up... What? 2 o'clock what time zone? 2, uh, two o'clock, I'm sorry. Eastern uh, Eastern time zone. Uh, so, 2 o'clock Eastern time zone. 
Um, and uh, we, I, I am bringing back Nan. Nan is going to be with us in our <laughs> Star Citizen stream. Yeah. Uh, so now Nan doesn't partake in our survival Sunday or Monday or RPG days, um, but she does come and join me uh, on the stream uh, for Star Citizen. So look forward to Nan coming back and sharing some Star Citizen time with everybody. So hope to awesome. see you there. Awesome. And I'm Gandora Olap. And what about you, Olap? What about yeah, you, Gandora? Yeah. I, I stream at twitch.tv slash Gandora Olap, and I play Star Citizen every single Tuesday starting at 3 p.m. PST. That is 6 p.m. Eastern. And Mondays, I stream whatever I feel like, which is probably going to be Star Citizen right now. But... uh Ooh. But uh, I, I do, I'll do, uh, generally speaking, most of my content is focused around multiplayer gaming. And then on my off days, I will stream sometimes RPGs. I've been doing Bannerlord. I run D&D &D every other week. So my normal stream schedule is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then whatever else I can throw in there if it's raining and I can't work on my cabin in the woods. Um, so basically, if it's if it's not raining on those other days, I'm out physically putting together a cabin in the woods IRL, because um, it's it's my way of basically performing self therapy in these trying times, uh, where I can't go physically visit anyone. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to say. You guys should definitely follow everyone in the night crew. They're all fabulous streamers, excellent individuals. Check them all out. Everyone who's been supporting the show, TV Liquid, thank you for the raid. Everyone who's been here all day today, you are amazing. I, I hope you guys can give me feedback on what you want to see changed here or what you liked from the changes that we made. Some of these were unintentional because I had to very, very quickly get a different stream software up. So um, we will improve some of those things. But I really hope you enjoyed this show. I am going to be sending our love to Spacey McGee, who is another Night Crew streamer. I did want to say that Buster the Destroyer is also online. I am sending it to Spacey because he has slightly less viewers. So let's go. Send the love. Support the crew. And we will see you next Thursday. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a good night, everybody. Take care, everybody. See you in See the verse. The raid. Okay, the raid's working. The raid's working. Yay. I have the power. Yay. Thanks, <laughs> everybody. everybody. See you next Thursday, 10 p.m. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and we have other shows. It's good times. All right. Yeah. So. Hopefully, the raid's working. And hopefully, pushing the button. Transition. It works. Are we, good? we are good.